Hello traders and welcome to NAF's weekly market compass where we help you navigate the week ahead. Our weekly market compass is brought to you by our head trader Troy who in between assisting traders and taking the next step in their careers provides weekly and daily guidance in our live trading room every single day. Before we get into this week's guidance we need to remind you that trading does carry significant risk and all information in this video is just provided for educational purposes only and is not offer or recommendation to trade future stocks, options, or forex. From everyone here at NAFT, good hunting out there and happy trading. Here's Troy. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this morning's briefing was not recorded, uh, therefore I'm having to uh, redo it, and so that's okay because uh, we have plenty of time to do that. Today is December 26th. As you can see, based on ForexFactory.com calendar, uh, there is banking holidays basically worldwide the day after Christmas. U.S. markets are open, and there are a couple of numbers that came out this morning. 959 was the Richmond Manufacturing Index at 20 versus an estimated of 22. Not good. Now, this follows the fact that we had less than uh, expected on the Philly, on the Philly manufacturing index as well. Uh, so this does not bode well for future um, situation for manufacturing in, in the future, so for the new year. I'm not real happy about that, but there's nothing I can do. It is a yellow item, and it doesn't really affect the immediate market, but it is a macro item that I do pay attention to. Looking further ahead of the week, tomorrow should be a much, much better day. Uh, volume should be increased as European markets as well as uh, other markets come online. Uh, we should start seeing volume come up. Uh, it will still be a light week from a volume perspective because it is the week between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, but we do have a couple of red items tomorrow on December 27th. We have at 10 a.m. the CB cons Consumer Sentiment. This is a huge deal because consumer spending, consumer confidence is such a big driver for the U.S. economy. This will be a this will be and is a big number tomorrow at not, at 10 a.m. We'll be paying attention to that. Also, pending home sales. Now, pending home sales are not as important as say uh, building permits. Um, Pending home sales is just sort of the final follow through. So you already know that building permits are up, housing starts are up, and then you finally get the pending home sales coming through. So not as important as some of the other housing numbers, uh, but very, very interesting. Uh, you have to jump down to Thursday to get another red item. Unemployment claims at 830 for the U.S., always a big mover. Uh, we have estimate of 241K. will be interesting to see how that plays out. I Personally, we'll be watching the preliminary wholesale inventories um, number to see what's going on there. If we had a strong um, uh, Christmas, uh, you'd expect these wholesale inventory numbers to be lower than expected, and which will mean that those uh, inventories must be rebuilt over time. So that's always a good thing. We'll look to see that. Chicago PMI coming through at 945, natural gas and crude oil inventories on Thursday. Natural gas earlier at 10.30, 11 a.m. Always, crude oil inventories always creates a uh, extra volatility for crude oil and something you should be paying attention to as well as avoiding being in a crude position prior to 11 a.m. Friday, a uh, very, very quiet day news-wise. Um, I believe we have a full day on Friday, uh, so no, no shortened um, trading hours on Friday, which is the last trading day before New Year's. Uh, it will be a very, very slow day on Friday. Probably want to be done trading by noon on Friday uh, just because volume will be uh, spilling off as most traders start leaving. Uh, if they're even here at all this week, uh, they'll definitely start leaving Friday noon. So again, very similar to uh, last Friday, uh, the Friday before Christmas. Uh, you'll see very little activity in the afternoon, boring, nasty trading, um, limited opportunities. Unfortunately, I would say that risk goes up with lower volume situations. So uh, I tend not to trade Friday afternoons um, before uh, a major holiday. Uh, that being said, of course, next week uh, we start on Tuesday, full tilt January 2nd uh, by set by the Probably the third on Wednesday of next week, volume should have returned to the market. New year, 
new portfolios, new performance matrices, all that will start kicking in and you'll start seeing a lot more activity starting next week. All right, let's jump over to a couple of charts here just really quickly. Um, I like to look at crude oil uh, on a bigger time frame to see uh, what's going on. And what's interesting is today um, we have had a big move up. We've broken out uh, above 59. This is a long time uh, top that we have now eclipsed. Um, and the question is, is this, this just holiday run up? There is no news associated with this. Um, is there some sort of geopolitical reaction to something? I don't know. I can't find anything on the net about that. Uh, I'd be very, very careful. I would lean to the short side uh, on this one, but with caution until we can actually figure out what the catalyst was that caused this. Certainly could be just the low volumes of trading uh, and taking out stops, and then it just keeps fueling the fire, keeps going up. Um, very disconcerting. I look at uh, crude oil as a fear and greed matrix uh, or um, fear and greed uh, you know, by part, you know, as not as a trading vehicle, but as fear and greed. Uh, that being said, uh, this certainly doesn't look good. Um, not good for the U.S. economy, not good uh, anywhere except for the uh, oil producing countries. Really surprised at this because the fundamentals say that supply is adamantly available. And um, this is great, great for the fracking or the U.S. oil market. These guys are going to be selling this big time. Uh, as supply will come in inevitably. Um, that being said, there's, we can't, I don't, haven't seen anything over the, the news wires trying to attribute why we have popped up here, other than we had this uh, wedge going on here. We finally broke out of that wedge and maybe got some buy pressure to the upside. So not what I would normally like to see in oil, particularly as a fear and greed metrics, as well as the uh, gold here is also going up. So while I can't find anything specific about North Korea or um, Russia or Trump or anything that might be adding fear uh, into the market, we are definitely seeing fear coming back into the market. We are right here at 76.4. We could certainly turn over here, but it sure looks like they want to retest uh, these highs around 1304 area. Um, again, no particular reason for this. Uh, obviously, when we were watching this move down and the bounce, when the bounce started, we expected it to go to the 38, maybe the 50, but we would have liked to see it continue to come down. But it did not do that. So there has got to be some sort of fear and greed that's coming into the marketplace um, at this time, which I can't put my finger on. I don't know exactly what that is. So I would be careful out there. Again, this week is going to be tough with the uh, holiday. It's really a holiday week in between Christmas and New Year's, uh, always low volume, um, which lends it to be easily manipulated by low volume. Um, so you can have high volatility with low volume. That is a bad thing that can happen. You can see big movements uh, with very little liquidity. So be very careful this week as you trade. Um, I'm doing very short term trades with um, tight stops. And um, we'll be doing that all the way until next week. So hope you have a great day. Happy trading.